Substituted and Council Lambert, and I will substitute for Council Lambert. Lambert. Any declarations of interest? Public participation. Receive questions and comments from members of public on any items included on the agenda. Attention to to. Right, okay. Who would like to speak? Anybody? Public participation? You will, when it comes to our. No, you have to speak now. It's public participation. Okay, you can't speak to any agenda items. Oh, you can't. Well, okay. okay. Would you like a meeting about. No, 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 no. You have to stand up. Okay. Sign the law. Sign the law in. Are they on Rod Okay. Would you like a proper meeting about the river and the riverfront and. Um, and the fact that all the things we suggested and have requested over the last few years have been ignored by the council, um, and that, that you have now um, put in district endorsement whose own signage contradicts your own mooring policy, and you still haven't done the basic things that would make life on the river a lot better for us as neighbours, and in effect, you are the worst possible neighbours in the, in the impact of the moorings on our home environments. So that's what we think we need. Now, obviously, I've got years of stuff on the river, I know all about river law, um, and we can argue that till the cows come home, but I'm not going to accept anybody putting a ticket on in any of my boats or sending me a ticket, because I have a right, a legal right to navigate the Thames and actually walk for free in the course of navigating the Thames. And that was defined in the court case three years ago against district enforcement where they were found against by the judge in Reading, who stated that there is no defined time period for mooring in course of navigation. So we are fed up with the council's sort of attitude and their failure to, to talk to the people on the river. The town is called Henley on Thames. I have never been to the press, but I have a lot of things that I could go to the press about, which would be quite embarrassing. Okay, just get it. So that's where we stand on the river. We completely not accepting um, whatever you're proposing, which we don't understand because you've never communicated with us. You've never had a meeting. Um, I don't worry, I'll find it. Anybody, would you like to come back at that? Have you read the proposal? Sorry? Have you read the proposal? It's, in your, it's to make it more accessible for you to be able to, it's to improve the way it currently is. For what? For your moorings. So yeah. to visit Henley, as you've just stated, so I find it hard that you've come to a meeting tonight without even reading the agenda item to which we're discussing and voting. You're good. Okay, I think, that's you know, that, no, that's let's, try, let's try to make it work. Okay. So the rest of my name is Anne Holly. You can remove your mask. No, I'm comfortable. You, just stand on your phone. Next to me. Me. You, Anne Holly. A little thin more. Live on the island. So okay. that's my home on the island. And um, I agree with what Simon's saying. I do find it odd that we had a letter stuck on our car in the car park where the council know we paid £1,400 to park our car on the boat. And actually, by the way, where we put our recycled bottles, paper, cardboard, and I know you think that we put them on the other side of the river, we don't. Some do, but yeah. we've got it on camera, so it's fine. Okay, well, I don't. Okay. And I, I'm, a big, I'm a big person who puts lots of signs up on it and go around it for my thank you notes with a dust in them during COVID. But I do find it odd that we found out that way and that I just thought it would have been um, somewhat more pleasing had you approached us and asked us a little bit more about river life and living on the island and how we could work together to do this rather than just telling us that we can't more. 
something? Yeah, I've got several emails actually from last summer where I did offer all of you residents a meeting. Yeah. I've also got another email as proof where I chased up, does this meeting want to happen? It never actually happened. I had email from uh, Simon, obviously, um, because quite frankly, I was getting sick of seeing the abuse to staff. And um, also, and I was chair of the committee at the time. And also, I had a reply from somebody named Adam. I'm afraid I don't, without going into the email, know his surname, but he also lived on yeah. Adam or Alex. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. He was a resident of the island. He was somebody that came back to my offer. I absolutely did offer for the council to meet with you over a year, year and a half ago yeah. to resolve some of these issues to stop the several hundred emails that we were receiving. And we I also. Sorry to interrupt, but I don't remember specifically. Okay. I also chased it up afterwards. Yeah, and also, I, I we may be your neighbour, you're not paying a council tax to us. This is, this is really, I don't find this a friendly atmosphere. I think it's, no, I, I wonder how that was created. I okay, right, just get it. I don't come to these very often, and I really no. am genuinely saying we're not here to be antagonistic, we're here no. to make it work. And it would be nice if we all tried to make it work. Okay. Right, I'll take that point on board. Shall we, can I just say one more thing? No, you've had your chance to speak. Is it, is it, you only get a chance once to speak. Thank you very much. You've made your point. It's not very good. Um, do, you like, do you like to say anything? Anything else? Um, yeah, I will. My name's Barbara Hazel. I have a phone call. Could you speak up? I've got Sorry. The part of the property on your date, um, we got told two days beforehand about the change in the rules about mooring on the towpath. Subsequent to that, we tried to avoid it, but my sister actually accessed the towpath. She registered the boat and got a message back that said there was she wasn't allowed to return for 72 hours, which is a little bit, I mean, you're, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. If you register, then you get this message, and then if you register again, you're but she breaking doesn't live, rules. Your sister doesn't live on the island, she's just visiting. She? Yes, but she was. She has a boat there, and she was accessing the tow park, so she registered her boat to, 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 to walk the dog, it was, and then she got a message that said it was only 72 hours, she couldn't come, to, she couldn't come back within 72 hours. Which, if you're walking a dog, you need to do on a daily basis. It's that sort of thing. This whole registry is also, if you wanted to go, and and no, no, sorry, if you wanted to go and get a pint of milk, you wanted to go to church and want to register. My parents, who also go to the, the island, don't have smartphones. That exclude. That's that's part of the Equality Act. That you're, you're excluding members of the public from having that access. I I I just feel that. There needs to be a little bit more thought going into how this proposal, if it goes through, is, is, is worked out such that everyone has the access that they need. Okay, thank you very much. Chairman, can you see if the town clerk can respond to the comments? Um, so, um, the the, the, so there haven't been any changes in the uh, mooring charges at all. Uh, the only changes have been um, that um, if somebody is um, is uh, mooring there during the daytime between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., they need to register their boat for free. They don't they don't have to pay any charge. So the charges haven't haven't changed. Um, the system was actually um, uh, the work to, to put in the enforcement uh, was. Uh, actually uh, initiated by uh, by Mr. Loring uh, and his complaints about uh, overstaying moorers. Uh, so it's interesting to hear that uh, his opinion now is that we cannot overstay because there is no maximum time. So we put it. We so so we put it. Thank you. So we so, so we so we have this talk to a lawyer. Excuse, excuse me. We normally run a meeting where someone oh, speaks. No, you must someone be quiet. Now. Need to be able to speak excuse me, Mr. Loring. Please be quiet. Please be quiet. Please be quiet. Or I shall have to leave the meeting. Please mute the speaker. 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 Please mute so the system the system has been the system has been put in place for uh, for various reasons to try and stop 
um, overstaying uh, boats um, that of course do take up uh, do take up space and, and mean that there's less space for legitimate moors uh, and also uh, means that um, there are there are moors who who uh, may not be paying the, the full fees and we've had problems with enforcing that and this means that we can uh, we can make sure that those who are supposed to be paying um, in order to support the upkeep of our parks and green spaces are doing so. So these are the reasons why we put them in place. There have been teething issues, and these are things that we found out during the first couple of weeks. Uh, so the uh, issue that's been raised uh, about you, reg uh, you registered and then you've been told that uh, you can't register again for 72 hours, that shouldn't happen. And, uh, and we need to make sure that these teething issues are sorted out. Um, yes, um, we do encourage people to register using a, a smartphone, um, but there is also the possibility to register by phone as well. However, perhaps that message could be, could be clearer. So there are teething issues that we do have to work out, and the agenda item on uh, tonight's agenda is to try and resolve one of those uh, issues, uh, which is that, uh, that it is clear that uh, residents from the island uh, do wish to uh, do wish to more and have been more really outside of the, the periods um, and uh, uh, and haven't been paying the ten pounds uh, more in charge uh, that has been due. Um, and, this due to, and, and, and this is to this is to to realise uh, that actually um, uh, the recommendation is that yes we should be encouraging. Um, sustainable modes of transport and so if residents of the uh, islands do wish to access Henley it makes much more sense for them to be able to moor at Mill Meadows uh, at a reduced rate from, from other moorers in order to be able to access their local communities without having to, to drive into the town to do so. So that's, that's, that's uh, behind uh, tonight's resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So, with a, a scheme, because we do schemes for uh, when we park in all the parking things and the parking bays and all that sort of stuff, we have to pay into the system. So, you're, you can park in your zones, uh, the parking zones. Is there a way, or is that already been implemented, like having a, a badge that all these boats can put on? So, they that's don't the get it. That's what yeah. we're proposing. That's, that's, that's the proposal. proposal. So, we'll come to that then. Because I think that would yeah. be a good way of moving forward. Yeah. Because then the people that's what they're against. against. Yeah, right. Well, let's move on now. We shouldn't be against it. We're trying to help it. Okay, right. There you go. Okay, let's move on now. Right. Oh, so, sorry. I didn't see you there. I was just going to say, listening to it, there's clearly what well, there might be a difficulty in communication between the town council and the residents on the yeah. island. So maybe if there's a, a cleaner way of creating a clearer channel of communication, I don't know. Uh, we have a problem. No, no, okay. I don't know if you have a, a lot of residents. Everybody areas of town have residents committees and bits like this, but whether there is an easier way of having a point of communication to try and help communication on these issues going forward. So I would say so maybe okay. something like that. Can, right. look right. can we move on now, please? No. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's do the minutes of the Recreation and Meetings Committee on Tuesday, the 22nd of June. I have a proposal. Seconder. One in favour? Minutes of the Pudding Green Working Group held on the 4th of August at 4pm. Um, have a seconder. One in favour? Okay, right, can we do progress? On to progress. That is the next one, isn't it? Sorry, I'm a bit rusty. Um, right, progress, right. Fairmile Chapel, any legal works are in hand, administrative paperwork has been drawn up and marketing material is being filed. Any questions on that? Okay, donation of the Slovenian hay rack, the installation of the hay rack at Phillipsfield will be carried out once the travel restrictions allow. Awaiting further information from the British Slovenian Society. Riverbank repairs. This project will be led by the Town Park Planning Committee, and the unit will include investigations into riverbank repairs, steps in Florida. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. 
provisions of toilet tap napkins, which is an agenda item, so we'll talk about them. Lido Working Group, which is currently on hold, further updates will be brought to this committee is available. Welcome all, still on going. Parks and open spaces policy report regarding dogs on these will be brought into a future committee meeting. So much Wardenton, this item has um, if Wardenton has now been appointed, so it can come off um, this, so we don't need to discuss that. New Street Slipway, the line marking has been completed, plant has realigned, and the signage is in order, and the bollard is being moved, and the bike rack, the bike rack recycled. That's Just to say on that one, well done getting it done so fast. I remember we were sat in the meeting, I was approved, it was like, it could take a couple of months. I'm sure it was done within a couple of days when I walked down that stairs. So that was good. Yes, and it was very, very clear signage. Yes. 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 I just wanted to ask if we can add the little more in things back, can't we? The bar graphs. Becky? Um, I've forgotten what that was about. Yes, indeed, yeah. We're, we're more than happy to do so. Um, uh, I think we, uh, I can't remember what exactly what was agreed, but it was certainly yeah. agreed that we were, that they were going to uh, appear, uh, appear back and, and also see if there's any other uh, items that would, any other income streams that would benefit from the sanctuary. But I will, I will. Thank you. Thank you. So, so, Becky, want to say anything about the management accounts? No, that's fine. Thanks, Donna. No comment. Right. Agenda item seven to consider purchasing new heaters for the water and heating systems at the Jubilee Park Outdoor Sports Centre and Parks Department, Wheat Reading Road, as the current boilers have been issued with do not use notice. Um, I was really uh, disappointed actually, um, not that shocked, but certainly disappointed to see that the low carbon um, option was so expensive. Yeah. Um, the chair of the climate emergency group has been working on this um, and has suggested that the cost may be able to be brought down if this committee had slightly more time, but obviously we're in a position where something needs to be done and the money does need to be wired from other budget lines. If, if they were able to be miracle workers and get the cost right down to what we could afford and it, as was in the recommendation tonight, yeah. then waiting that extra week would be good if the town clerk has a solution for the way forward to do that. I, I, I think what, uh, uh, what um, Councillor Henson has suggested is, is, a, is a good suggestion, uh, that if the, if the committee is, is minded to, uh, uh, to resolve the recommendation, uh, that it, it, it do so. Um, but with um, uh, but with the proviso that um, uh, well actually the uh, uh, the finance strategy and management committee uh, won't be meeting until um, I believe it's the fourteenth. Yeah. Um, so there is there is two weeks where further work could be undertaken uh, before that recommendation goes to that committee. Okay. Um, but the uh, sorry the other thing I forgot to mention on the end of that is that whatever system is put in needs to be really robust because there's a lot of hot water that's needed so um, it needs to be up to the standard as well that of, of something that's used frequently okay thank you do you have your hand up yeah i was gonna say i think you go with 6.1 and today see what can be done those two you know i think it'd be a shame for us to have a council facility that isn't in proper use with signs that are dangerous and hazardous. So I think it's something we need to do. And with Kelly, I'm disappointed to slip the low carbon version was fifty thousand pounds in comparison to fourteen nine from quote one uh, the pipeline would be going to six point one so that'd be yeah, good. We, we can break it down so yeah. that it's possible. I think um, I may just say, um, as a council that's declared a climate emergency, I think obviously we would all agree that that's our preference is to go low carbon, um, carbon neutral even, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I agree, let's, let's go with the town clerk's uh, recommendation and that can follow the councillor pointing it out to us. I think so. All those in favour? Thank you. All those against? Are those half asleep on their phones? <laughs> I voted. We've all got caught tonight. We really are twins. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. 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 Right
okay, right. <laughs> Seating license policy. Right. Any questions? Becky, would you like to speak? Becky? Um, hang on. I think Sheridan's probably best place to speak to the policy. Okay. Um, so the, the seating license policy was uh, drawn up. Um, well, the, uh, the main reason was to try and iron out um, some of the discrepancies that we have uh, on, uh, on marketplace. Um, we have a, a numerous seating licenses. Uh, all with different conditions uh, of uh, different sizes um, and there are uh, discrepancies between what is uh, on the marketplace and what is in their licenses as well. So it was really felt that we, we need to get some, uh, some clarity and some consistency. Um, the other main uh, thing to note is um, the temporary legislation that was brought in due to COVID, uh, which, uh, was, uh, which was intended to and, and was very successful in allowing businesses to be able to apply very quickly for seating licenses. Um, it's uh, reduced the amount of time that we had to be able to um, issue a license um, and uh, it reduced the fee that could be levied uh, to a flat £100 fee per license. Um, and that is in place until September 2022, which is a big hit to the council's finances. Um, <clears throat> so the so the policy um, is there to uh, to um, make it clear the framework under which the council is operating. We don't actually um, we don't issue the licenses as the landowner. Um, it's a very bizarre situation whereby we own the subsoil of the marketplace. Uh, marketplace itself um, is, is owned by the county council, if you like, as, as a public highway. Um, and then they have entered into an agreement with us whereby we can control the use of the marketplace to a certain extent. And one, uh, one of the things that we can control is uh, the issuing of seating licenses. So it's a very, very roundabout way. However, because of that, we are still under the same obligation as any other principal authority um, as to how we issue those licenses. Um, and the council up until now hasn't been, uh, <coughs> hasn't been following the legislation that should have been. Um, not, there hasn't been any ma major breach that would cause concern, um, but we have to be uh, aware of the legislation and that we should be complying with the legislation um, and carrying out consultations that we should be carrying out um, on the seating license applications. Um, and so that's why we put the seating license policy uh, in place, uh, along with a review of the charges um, and, uh, and the areas that, um, uh, the areas of the individual seating licenses, just so that we can get clarity and consistency uh, moving forward. Any questions? I've got some comments. Okay. Um, at first, I didn't want to see the Starbucks money go down. Forget the fact that you know we're losing twenty six grand a year until September twenty twenty two on our seating licenses because of this this legislation. Um, so when we return, I was then a bit like, well, I get it's evened out, but I really don't appreciate Starbucks going down because I feel that they're in a prime location. Um, I also feel that out of all of these, they're the chain, the chain that maybe doesn't pay the taxes um, and, and all sorts. And so I feel that we should be prioritising our more local um, establishments. So part of me feels like if you've got the prime location, you're a national chain. Yeah, actually, you should pay more. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I feel strongly enough to propose that tonight necessarily, because I, I know that we're also when we are able to start charging our normal charges, we are um, four and a half grand up a year. So that's very that's very healthy. I'm very happy with that. 
but part of me is a little bit I, I do think that Starbucks should maybe pay more than the rest. I don't know if that's politically correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah we it, it is um, a very uh, just to, to try and talk about the, the reasoning behind the proposal. It, it is a, it is a very um, difficult um, and it is very subjective. Um, in issuing the licenses, it is not possible to bring the licenses back to a committee to determine because of the time frame that we have to work within. Therefore, whatever is put in place needs to be uh, needs to be uh, needs to be able to be determined at the officer level. So we need a clear steer from committee. Uh, um, the difficulty is, yes, if you're a national uh, national chain and in a prime position, for example, uh, uh, perhaps you should pay more. If you're a local establishment, maybe you should uh, pay less. The difficulty is, is getting that, that balance and that equity. And for example, what counts as a chain and what counts as an independent. For example, you could say H Cafe is is that a chain or is it a, international? Well, it's <laughs> it is a it's it's hardly a national chain, uh, but it obviously has a, a very high profile. Crockers uh, equally, they have two outlets in two different places. Are they a chain or, or are or are they not? So it's 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 really really difficult to be able to draw that line. If we can find wording that is acceptable. Uh, that that allows uh, allows us to clearly draw that line and make that distinction. Then fair enough. What we've done is we've taken our our lead from other uh, authorities and how they have uh, dealt with these situations. And what we found in most places uh, is that there has been a flat uh, charging structure. So it's it's been uh, based on the the size of the area. And nothing more. It doesn't take into account the type of uh, establishment. No. Okay. So all these, uh, all the all the companies that are listed here, they're all the same price to get to the bottom one. So is the bottom one obviously taking up more space, or are they just what? They're all the same price. Same. They're all the same price now. Oh, right. There you go. So even this one now. Yeah. That's all the same thing. price. Oh, that's, yeah, that's the that's the yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry, we're, losing, we're losing quite a lot of money now because of legis legislation. Yeah, COVID. Yeah, COVID. It's just temporary. <laughs> I can't talk. It's temporary. Sorry. I think the flat price does make sense. But I think, yeah, uh, you know, agree with what Kelly's saying. I think our general mood is maybe if we get to a point such as when the cheesy grape obviously applying for their block or the other cup, if we end up in a situation where there's more applicants than there are spaces, I'd just like to see a system then that prioritizes geographically. Uh, yeah, you're right, defining it is difficult, but it's one of those, I think, although it is a gray area, it's easy to differentiate, say, Crockers from Starbucks. And I hope if we get to a point where we've got, say, a second version of Crockers or Another cheesy grape or a drunk in this, or different, that we can then at that point prioritize potentially someone else over a national chain. So, whether there's wording that does that, maybe we just try and prioritize geographically focused to any rather than international. But whether that's doable or not, I'll leave up to you. Oh, sorry. Sarah, do you want to speak? Um, just in, in, in response to that. So, We've laid down the policy, or, or tried to lay down as, as best as possible, a mechanism whereby, if if a plot is is contested, yeah. um, and what the what the priorities uh, uh, would be, yeah. um, and so to say that take into account, um, the, one of the main things is the overall benefit to the community from the business uh, as well. Um, so it's it's still not. Cut and dry, but it, it still gives us a clear uh, a, a clear steer on, on, on how to determine the applications. Sure. Um, Stefan, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm not normally on this uh, um, I think going down differentiating between chains and non chains and one or two outlets is actually fairly difficult. But um, I do agree with. With uh, Councillor Henson about the Starbucks, it's about the prime location of that particular plot. 
down at the bottom of the marketplace is a prime location, therefore they should they should be paying more for it. Um, anyway, or if they don't want it, it should be given to another company that is going to pay pay the money and get great use of it. So I think there is a way of actually differentiating down the marketplace and saying to Starbucks <coughs> you should be paying what you were paying before, 6,700 quid. Yeah. More points. Um, is there also in place a mechanism whereby, <coughs> for instance, can purchase a bit of extra space? Because um, there is actually quite a lot of space at that end of the marketplace where one and two is. Um, so I, I personally think that these companies should be able to purchase a little bit more space and pay the town council and its residents a little bit more money for that space. Yeah. It's we've <coughs> what we try to achieve is is try and standardize the, the space because what we found is that the spaces were all very uneven and the amount of space that was actually being used on the ground did not actually correlate with the amount of space that they've been given in their in their license. Um, I I would say that in, in that area because you have one, two, and three close together. It does look like there is a space between one and two. However, actually, when you're on the ground, there's, um, I think you actually need slightly more of a flow of that for the, for the flow of traffic. Okay. And it can get quite tight between box one, two, and three. Um, so I'd, I'd say you, you, you try to maximize the amount of this still having that balance, al allowing for the, for the free flow of the traffic. Um, so I'd say probably, probably not. Thank you. So, should we resolve that it is recommended that the committee resolves that it adopts the new charges in the areas in, as detailed in the report? Yes. <coughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> well, I'm trying to go. All right. I think that's carried. Thank you. Um, and I, I have to say, it's, uh, it was a lot of work um, carried out by the estates, uh, particularly uh, Caroline Adams and, and uh, Becky Walker. Um, however, it would be possible to also um, approve the policy. Yeah, well. approve the policy as well. All those in favour. Thank you. Okay. okay. All things signing. Transport Strategy Group are implementing a project to encourage residents and visitors to walk rather than drive short journeys <coughs> into the town centre by putting up signs in, in, indicating the short amount of time it takes to walk from 10 locations around the end of town. Lawrence. Oh, Stefan has done a lot of hard work on this, and I think the signs themselves actually look great. We can see what they look like in 3.3. I think it fits perfectly with our kind of climate emergency and our strategy to try and encourage people out of their vehicles and to, to walk into town. I think, you know, to a lot of us, you know, who do already walk, it might seem obvious, but I think where are these going to be placed on the periphery of town, as you can see above 3.2 in the image there, I think it's great. You know, many, many, many sorry, residents have seen actually it's only 10, 13, or 14 minutes walk might actually be encouraged to leave their car at home and walk in. Potentially fits with future walking initiatives and bits like that. So I think it's a nice step in the right direction. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for your comments, Council as well. On that. Yes, I mean, we have, well, jointly, it's not just me, we have been working on this for a long while. You've got to bear in mind that this is 50% funded by SOD, so these close. Um, We've still got some work to do on the silage that's going to go on Oxfordshire land, but I've got a meeting um, in a couple of weeks about that. For it. So it's a, to actually move it forward, you've got the, you know, the sites on Henley Town Council land. Um, I hope the committee will do. And it's precisely to actually say, if someone sees the sign and say, why do you, it's only five minutes of walk from here to Henley. Okay, I'll walk rather than drive in my car. It's it's a subtle message to say, please walk, please cycle, and don't drive your car in the head. And that's the purpose of this. And I think the posts look very good. 
and the most certainly are of a wood. They're wood, that's a, that's a plus, but they are of a type of wood that will last many, many, many years. This wood in Roman is actually used in ships, pilings, in salt water, so it, they're solid, substantial bits of kit. So um, I hope that um, the recommendation from Transport, which is on page 40, um, will approve. Please, thank you. Carl's happy, I'm happy. Carl? Carl? Hi there, yeah. evening all. Yeah, yeah, happy. Okay. I think it's a fantastic idea because it, it, it's probably actually going to be quicker to walk than drive. It's going to play yes. in town. <laughs> it's a very walkable town, isn't it? Yeah. No, more people there. Yeah. It's a lady. <laughs> That's my personal opinion. I think there's far too many ladies in town. Mm. Yeah, walking. Much better for you. Anyway, it is recommended that the committee resolves to approve the sighting of the new walking signs at Mill Lane Car Park, Mill Meadows, opposite the river, and Rowan Museum, Mill Meadows Car Park, as part of the Transport Strategy Group. All those <coughs> in favour? That's unanimous. Well done. Right. Great. Thank you. Okay, agenda item 10 Park Warden Apprenticeship. To provide an update on parks team staffing and make recommendations on the appointment of an apprentice park warden. Is that Carl doing that? Carl? Carl? Hi there. Um, yeah, um, I just wanted to say that it's uh, it's going to be a fantastic opportunity for somebody to, um, to, to learn some uh, good life skills and um, move forward in a career. Um, uh, similar to to um to what we do, so um I hope yeah I hope we go ahead with it. Kelly, um I think this is just so great. I know that Carl and Kyle, um, our park staff, have been to you know speak with people like Nomad, um, uh, before, and you know working with local organisations. I just really like the idea of training, educating, and employing young local people. Um, I know that the word local isn't necessarily specific and we're in a bit of a situation like we are in the Starbucks thing, but I think the idea that we can give somebody real life skills and that experience to, to have a good job, you know, as a town council, I just absolutely love it. And I, I wish we could do more um, if we if we have funding in the future. Um, I think this is a great step forward. Um, this has been going on quite some time and to have a facility like that it's a bit like the you know down the, down the river you've got a park there and you've got it's like not having toilets there but anybody uh, when you've got facilities uh, like that with the skate park in the summertime when it's quite even with people <coughs> the, uh, the landlord of the pub didn't want it. Quite a few of them were using the, the comfortable toilets, and he got a bit fed up with it. Um, 
but most of it it, it uses the hedgerows up there now, at the moment. But I think to have the toilets up there, it just improves the area of the stop set. I know there's uh, a toilet just down in the car park, not very far away. Um, but when you create a facility, the, the spec that that is, the amount of people who go in there, I think you need a toilet facility. And you can tack it on to the end of headways. It's not, I don't think it's going to cost a lot. It's just a small building which is going to go on the end of the, end of the building, which you create. Um, you'll have a central lock in. Um, I don't go, there's so many different types of toilet systems you can use these days. I think it's, um, and I will keep pushing it, even if it gets taken off the agenda today, um, I will still keep pushing it because, and I'll get more reports. Because I don't think that some of the people that have uh, filled in the questionnaire or the report have actually seen people. Yes, but Dave, we've had two. Consultations, or what you can do, keep going to get the result of that. Yeah, no, it's, it's not It's a lot of money we're spending on these consultations. You can't keep going. People don't want the toilets. Plus, they will probably get vandalized. We have put signage up there to show people how far it is to go to the nearest toilet. And I'm afraid you have to accept this that we are not having the toilets. I think we were in two public consultations, and this latest one, if you look at the figures at the top of page 46, uh, 55 responses received. 38 yes, 62%, so almost double said no to this. I've always had misgivings about the toilets in this particular location because of the potential for maintenance costs, vandalism, etc. etc. and and the usage of them as well. But I think we've, we've clearly got to um, the reason why we have public consultations is, is to actually ask the ask, public or a survey, it's not definitive, we don't have to go with the recommendations, but they are an indication that people are not happy. So therefore, after two consultations, the public saying we're, we're not happy, or after two services, surveys saying, saying we're not happy, I think we have to listen to them. So therefore, I would like to propose 5.4, based on the, the results of the second public consultation is recommended that the committee resolve not to progress the project to provide permanent public facilities at Makers Road. I so propose. Second, Lauren. Speak. No, I think it's all messed up. Right. So all those in favour? Want to speak? Yeah. Want to speak? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I um, I've obviously been out there with Councillor Everton um, a few times, and. Um, you know, toilets will go there. There, there. There's no doubt about it whatsoever. I think the sad thing about it is, you know, the, the lack of support from, from the users of the area up there. And, and I, be, I would have expected, you know, the users to come forward and say that they needed it. And unfortunately, they're not coming forward to say there is a need for it, which, which does confuse me um, uh, a wee bit, because obviously it's very well used there. But as I say, looking at the figures um, that are in front of us this evening, you know, I don't think we can do anything else and, um, you know, support uh, 5.4 on the agenda. And, you know, maybe, you know, a year go by and as Councillor Everton says, you know, maybe bring it again, but you really need support from the users up there. And, you know, I don't, I don't see it in those, in those, in those figures, which is, I mean, it's a bit unfortunate. Okay. So can we move to the vote? Right. All those in favour of 5.4. All those against? All those abstaining? Okay, that's so new, and that's put that thing. Right, let's move on to mooring permits for Rodent Eop residents. To consider offering offering mooring permits tickets to Rodent Eop right. residents. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, Kelly. Um, yeah, just a few points. Um, I'd like to propose the recommendation 5.1 that I'd like to make some changes. Um, I would have up to one vote per residence, not two. Um, 
I see that small open day boats only is put in 3.5, but I'd like it strongly as part of the recommendation as well, um, because I don't think it should be canal boats, gym palaces or anything like that. I think it should be the small open spots. Just, Nothing with a cabin, basically. Just for commuting, literally, just to get across to the... Yeah. Okay. Um, and I, you know, I really like the idea of the proof of residence on the island, um, the proof of the registration of the boat, because I think a lot of, um, and it just, it's, it's very important. Um, the other thing that I would change, it says here £290 per annum or £145 for six months, um, and the other timescales to be considered, I think it would be to do something like a month by month thing would be a complete faff and a lot of admin work and wouldn't really be worth the cost. So I do feel that there should be a three month minimum. Um, so I would propose 5.1, but I would say small open day boats only in the actual recommendation so that it's really very clearly strongly taken into account. One boat instead of two per household and a three month minimum for any permit granted to ensure that we don't overrun ourselves with admin and, and everything else. Okay. Any other questions for Lawrence? Just a quick one. Why is there a cost involved in the permit? Reading through it, if it is between 10 to 3 in time frames to visit, can you come across and pick stuff up? Why does there need to be a cost involved in the permits anyway, if we're just allowing, controlling, or stopping them getting tickets through a system that they shouldn't be ticketed by at the moment? Through outside those hours. Can you repeat that? I missed that. Sorry. Sorry, can you look that? Oh, for outside those hours. So not between 10 and uh, Sorry, you've had your chance to speak. Okay, how do I get my daughter to school in the morning? I take her over there That's at 7 o'clock. That's not my problem. Go to Walbury Road. And I take her to school, and then she comes back at 4 o'clock. Technically, you live in Berkshire. No, I don't. I live in Oxfordshire. I pay tax That island is no, in No, you're absolutely Bucks. wrong. The line goes down the middle of the island. You should go around the back. Please leave the meeting. No. I've had enough of this. Please you leave are the going to be the call because the you won't have meetings with us. Please leave the meeting. And you're breaking the rules. Please leave the meeting the now. Please the towpath. And you need that. Please leave now. You, you own the land. You don't own the towpath. You don't own the access now. to the towpath. Please leave. It's a joke. Please You need to get lawyers and get more information for it. Bye. Bye. Sorry. Anybody else want to say anything? Right, can we please go? I need it second as first. Sorry, second. second. <laughs> Sorry, I got a bit distracted by that. Sorry, Lawrence. No, but I just think we are we are obviously trying to still make it easy for residents on the islands. I, and I get what you're saying about there will be all sorts of you know, if someone leaves a boat there for two weeks and bits like that, but I can't help but sit here and have sympathy for a story like that of trying to drop the child. He school. hasn't got a daughter at school. No, but, and I understand, but if there was to be examples of stories like that, that are we not creating systems too draconian? Why would somebody that lives in Berkshire go to school in Oxfordshire? You're using him as an isolated example rather than what if there is a situation like this. Yeah. The thing is, it seems to be that they've had rights of access for free so far. We're now getting crossed on them. That's not this example. So there have been, um, there are in place and have been, I don't know for how many years, but more years than, than I'm, I'm, all, I'm aware of, there have been charges um, outside of the hours of 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. I, I don't believe that there have been any objections to, to those charges. Um, now, obviously, uh, residents of... Uh, Is that because they've not been ever enforced before? Is that because they haven't been ticketed before, but now they are being ticketed? No, I'd like no, to... Sorry. I'm sorry. I'd like I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'd like to help. Wait, may I please say something that's positive? Yeah, okay. Thank you. My understanding, and I'm so glad that you are here, young man. Thank you very much for that. You know, we don't stay overnight over there. Your, your costing is based on people staying overnight. You don't, as you rightly say, there are little boats, mm -hmm. not bloody little bum boats, there are boats that allow us to step out, walk to town, and not go to the other side and take a car. And we're all trying to save the planet, we're all trying to walk a little bit more. We hop over, tie a little boat up that's 10 foot long. Built about a million, no gin palace, there's no alcohol in it, and we go and buy a pint of milk. And two hours later, we come home, and then we bring it onto our land, and it stays there overnight. That's all we're asking to continue to do. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, 
Yes, and those, those things are, 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 are very true. So there, there is no overnight morning. Um, however, it is accessing the, the area um, outside the hours of 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, which um, up until now, there has been a charge of 10 pounds. So, so technically, they should have been paying uh, a charge of 10 pounds each time they came across. Now, that hasn't been enforced. And quite frankly, I, I, I think everybody would agree that that would that would not be uh, that would not be fair. However, the other thing to, to bear in mind is that the council does uh, the council maintains the river bank. Um, it is it is considering um, hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of maintenance to the river bank, and the mooring fees go some way towards that. Mooring fees don't don't in, in any way um, cover the cost to the council of maintaining. Uh, the riverbank or, or maintain mill meadows. Um, so, the, uh, so all other moorers are required to pay. The question here is, um, uh, should, um, should residents from the island um, also uh, be required to pay? And if so, um, uh, should, they be, uh, should they be paying a reduced, uh, reduced amount? And, and that's the proposal um, here to recognise that there is a need that we that the council probably wants to support that need uh, for, for sustainable transport reasons, um, but that the that the cost at the moment is is probably too draconian, and so we should be looking at a at a reduced rate to to recognise that. Kevin, yeah. Um... First of all, if there were problems with access on our side and nobody agreed with it, use the access they have on the buff side. There's no, we're not stopping that or do anything. If it's more convenient to use Mill Meadows side and you need to use it outside of 10 and 3, that's the time we're talking about. If we charged at a weekly rate, which is less than the £10 a day rate, the weekly rate is 55, it would come to just under 3,000. We're proposing not even 10% of that. Um, for, for an annual, and, and they could come three times in one day after 3 p.m. No one's going to charge them, you know, however many times. It makes complete sense to have it like this. We got district enforcement in off the back of several, several complaints from residents on the island. Um, and now that it's here and we're trying to find a way for them not to be penalised and have to pay £10 every time, but still have a robust, efficient system, it's not what quite what was envisaged because they wanted everyone else to be kicked off, but not actually themselves. And I think we are trying to work with our neighbours, despite being such terrible neighbours that we are. Um, so I think that this is actually cost efficient. If they don't want to use it, that's fine. Don't take your boat to the other side and use the access you already have at the bath side. No one's saying we're giving you know stopping that or anything. They can still all use the bath side. Okay, uh, uh, yeah. They can still all use the bath site. Um, it's just we're giving them the extra option of if you want to come over this side because I don't know they're doing something this side of town, like Tesco's or whatever, or they their cars parked in Mill Meadows car because there's also permits for Mill Meadows car park. So it ties in with that as well. Then yeah, there should be a cost to it. We have costs, they have to be passed on. Our residents would pay, residents in the next district should pay also. Uh, yes, Chairman. Um, I'm sorry, listen to the the, the speakers and uh, I must say in 20 years being on this council I've never um, listened to anybody so arrogant as uh, um, Mr Law and I thought he was an absolute uh, disgrace yeah, okay, but, but obviously listening to the, to the two ladies here um, is a little bit different. I'm fully aware of the, of the spaces over the bar so there's seven spaces over there and they're normally taken up so there might not be any space for, for a boat to go over there uh, and um, you know, I, I think we're uh, using a sledgehammer to, 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 to crack a nut here. And uh, I would have thought a nominal fee of you know, the OSA would be £100 or, or, or whatever, somebody may you know, just go to the floor. Um, you know, if they wish to bring a boat to it, and I, and I don't think you're going to see seven boats today, I don't think you're going to see 14 boats today, you might see just one now and again. And the amount of space that's going to take up is probably negligible uh, on what's there. So I, 
I don't see the the point of. Um, I understand. You know, we we've, we've got obviously charges. And we have overheads. I totally understand that. But I think just a nominal fee, and I think we should all be reasonably reasonably happy there. Uh, whatever a nominal fee would uh, would be. But I can understand why you wish to more the boat uh, uh, at, uh, at Mill Meadows. Um, you know, rather than over at uh, Wargrave Road, because there is no space at Wargrave Road, it's as simple as that. Thank you. Stephen. Um, this is the day. I agree with Kelly's comment about putting um, an amendment in that it's uh, open top small uh, boats. Um, but I've also listened to you, you to the lady here as well, you the ladies here as well. That we should be encouraging you know, walking into town. I mean, to hop across, park a boat, hop in, get a pint of milk, go back on your boat. We should actually be, as a council, be enabling residents to do that. We, we all live in houses where we, well, we do in the town centre, we have a choice. You have to go to a car park or you can park on the road. And most of us park on the road because we've got space on the road outside. These residents aren't parking a car, they're parking a boat, which they have to have in order to use the facility. Councillor Ryan is quite right. We're, this is a fair challenge to crack them up. So we do need a registration system because there should be one boat per household and it should be registered with the name of the boat. And Kelly knows more about that than me. But what we should do is just say, you know, 5.1 and the cost is. And 40 quid a 40 quid a year, 50 quid a year, just to cover the admin cost. That's it. Job done. End of. I'll second that if I may. No, it, that wasn't that's a proposal. proposal. That was, yeah. Sorry. No, no, was that's say. just a debate. That was all. Yeah. But I think, come on. I can 300 quid a month is too much because it's. No, it's not 300 a year. 300 quid a year is too much. Because the residents have to use the facility. Well, they don't. So, but they're paying six pound a week. Six pound a week. Now, if you parked your car in our car parks, you couldn't do that. But we're not pounds. talking about. They cannot park. But they choose to get there. Sorry. Would you? Would you I don't want to get into that. But that's they, what they cannot park. If they want to access the town, they cannot I'll park the boat okay. anywhere else. I'm going to sum up now on Sorry. this proposal. Okay. Um, three less than three hundred no, is no. I'm summing up. Um, less than three hundred is nominal to me. We haven't included the regatta charges. They can use it completely free between ten and three. They don't have to use a permit. They can still use it between ten and three and not get a permit and still park the car in Mill Meadows car park. Um, this is for outside of that. It's um, I, uh, to me when actually the, the including regatta charges, it would be well over three thousand pounds less than 300 is not they don't have to have it for the full year so if they are only there part-time i think one of the ladies said that she was part-time resident she could have it for three or six months making it even cheaper to me six pounds a week when they should have been charged 10 pounds a day for going outside of 10 and 3 is a very nominal fee i don't understand how much lower you can go what do you want them to do three pounds a week one third of our daily cost in a week it makes no sense it's if you're going to have any less than that you might as well not have a fee just give a free permit why not let's just lose seven spaces in regatta week why not it makes no sense to me so i am sticking with the proposal of small open boats i think it is a, a nominal fee of 290 pound per annum or on a pro rata basis for less is is really fair um and that um it should be yeah like i say one boat per residence uh, be allowed and they don't have to use the site they can use the Walgrave Road site especially if you're only going for milk pop over go you don't you straight over the bridge job done in fact actually it's quicker to go from Walgrave Road to get a pint of milk than it is from Mill Meadows and there's maybe a station but that's a different story um so I feel if you want to have the privilege of mooring somewhere as busy as expensive and as wonderful um as the Henley Riverbank that we are also going to be improving and spending a lot of money on then outside of the hours where you already get it for three five hours of the day then yes absolutely i believe you should charge and i believe less than 10 percent of the annual charge is a nominal fee already so i'm sticking with my proposal if it fails it fails 
We'll see. Um, we'll see what the next proposal is. If so. What would you like to say? Yeah. Just a question the gentleman said. He brings his daughter over. He, he, he hasn't got a child. He hasn't got a child. Well, whatever. Are you going to work early in the morning? Yeah. Can I? Right, we need to vote. Can I try again? We need to vote now. All right, okay. All those in favor. Sorry, who's seconded the proposal? Who's seconding? Who's seconding the proposal? Who's shushing? Who is seconding? No idea. Someone seconded it because I Second. said. Right. I'll second it. And I'll just make a comment. Uh, having Kelly uh, explained it, then I, I think uh, I am going to change my view with respect to the So therefore, I will be voting for it. So, right. But, okay. All those in favour of the proposal of 5.1. All those against? <coughs> Carried. Okay. Right. And that, I think, sorry, was that what was the vote? No. What was the vote? Sorry. For 5.1. Yeah, sorry. What, 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 Shall we do that again? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's do this again. <laughs> right. All those in favour? John didn't vote the first time, but now I'm voting. Okay. To a permit scheme is introduced for residents of Red Rod. 5.1 as amended. As amended. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All those in favour. All those in favour. All those against. Fine. And it's not by the two-person majority, so that will go to full councillors' recommendation. Going to full councillors' Oh, that's a new one I've learned. Right. Okay. And that I love it. Yeah, no. Yeah, but it's never. We never had town clerks that enforced it before. <laughs> Yeah, it did. It's just it's, it's, it's okay. recommend instead of uh, result. Right, finally get some dinner. Yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 